I've made a ton of videos over the last couple years. And a lot of the transitions I do in my videos is speed ramping. And for all this time, I've done speed ramping a specific way in the edit tab. And it can be tedious to try to match up the perfect timing and get the exact clip length. But today I'm going to show you a completely new method that is absolutely the best way to speed ramp in DaVinci Resolve. You cannot get smoother speed ramps than this. It's actually really easy to do and everything you're going to learn today, you can do in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. All right. Let us begin. First, find a really good song. I use Musicbed. Check out the link down in the description. Then what you want to do is drag that track into DaVinci Resolve. Once you've dragged in the song that you want to use, it's time to make some beat markers. Then you make sure you select the track. Go ahead and play the song and on the beats one, two, three, and four, push M on your keyboard, just like this. You may need to zoom in and move the markers around to make sure they match up with the transients of the kicks and the snares. So once you've laid down your beat markers, next what you want to do is drag in the clip that you want to speed ramp. By the way, you guys, if you need footage, I have stock footage available linked down in the description. So if you want to follow along using some epic shots, feel free to download them. I just threw on a very basic grade. I do have power grades and LUTs available linked down in the description as well if you want to get the colors that you see in my videos. So once you've selected your clip, the first thing you want to do is trim the beginning and the ends of anything you don't want to use in the speed ramp. Then with that clip selected, go into Fusion. Come to the point where you see the first yellow indicator here on the timeline. Hold down Shift and press Spacebar and type in Tracker. Add a tracker. I'm gonna drag the tracker to the front Tesla emblem right here. Over here on the right hand side, under adaptive mode, make sure to click on the drop down and select best match. Then track forward. Once it's done tracking, come up here to the right hand side under operation, select operation. Then click on the drop down next to operation and select match move. Where it says merge, click on the drop down and select background only. Now, as you can see, there is a checkerboard behind the footage. We don't want that. So hold down shift and press spacebar and type in transform, add a transform node. Now, essentially what you wanna do is zoom and play with the center X and Y to move the clip to the point where you can't see the checkerboard. The checkerboard will be black in the edit tab. So once you've done that, go ahead and drag throughout the entire clip and make sure you cannot see any checkerboard as it plays through. You gotta be very careful because sometimes you will see it just drop a little bit. So I'm actually gonna bring this back up and increase the size and just triple check myself and we're good to go. Then click on the edit tab. Let's jump back here. Go ahead and drag your clip to the beat marker of your choice. Decide how long you want this clip to play for the song. I'm gonna have it play for the first four beats. It's a pretty long clip and there's a lot of things we can do within that time frame. Okay, now this is super important. You have to do this or else everything else is just not gonna work well. Right click on the clip and select new compound clip. Select create. Then push B on your keyboard. Click where the playhead is. Then push A on your keyboard to bring your cursor back. Click on the leftover fat, delete it. With your playhead over the clip, click on fusion. Scroll your clip all the way to the beginning of the timeline. Hold down shift and press spacebar and type in time stretcher. Add the time stretcher node. Now, see this little bar right here? You wanna drag that all the way to the end and see how many frames are in the clip. Right now, I have 2060. It's a really long clip, but yours may be a little bit lower. So make a mental note of whatever number this is for the clip that you're working on. Scroll back to the very beginning and you can see the two yellow points. Those are indicators of where we've trimmed the compound clip. Go ahead and drag your cursor all the way to the last yellow marker, and then come up here to the right-hand side where it says source time, and type in the number for your clip. Remember, mine is 20, 60. So now anything we do will be within the window of time that we've selected. Let's go ahead and drag this window up like this, just so we can kind of see what we're doing. At the top right-hand corner of your screen, you'll see a little spline indicator. Select spline, then select the time stretcher. If you don't see your graph here, that's okay. See this little double arrow? Go ahead and click on it. I'm gonna show you some really cool curves that you can use for your video. The first one is a simple S curve. Go ahead and highlight both those points and push S on your keyboard to smooth them out. 
This is a very common speed ramp that you'll see in a lot of viral videos. This specific shot has a lot of camera movement to it, but we can just kind of play around with this S-curve and see what we can do. So another common speed ramp is the boomerang. Now this essentially will be a boomerang. Check this out. Okay, so what if you wanna make some like time jumps? So first what you can do is create that basic S curve and then click another point, smooth it out. Maybe click another point along our main spline, click another point and let's just say another point. So each one of these will kind of represent a time jump. And what's cool is you can turn the spline kind of like that and then bring it up, highlight that, push S on my keyboard to smooth it out. And you can kind of create these wild curve adjustments and just make some really crazy stuff. So once you've done that clip, go ahead and pick another clip and do the exact same steps. It's really important to match clips up with the same movement and rotation, if there is any, in order to create a very flowy video. Now this is smooth, it looks pretty sweet, but we can even make it better. Next, what I wanna do is come up here to the effects. Drag an adjustment clip over the clips. Go ahead and trim the adjustment clip. Find the point of which the transition occurs between the two clips. So it speed ramps out from clip A to clip B right about there, great. I'm gonna click on the drop down and drag on my motion blur. This is not a plugin that you can find in DaVinci Resolve. It's actually one that I've created and it's epic. And then what I like to do is fade the clip by clicking on the top left and right corners of the adjustment clip. So it fades the motion blur in and out. Now this is super intensive on computers. So what I like to do is push D on my keyboard and then hold down option and click and drag multiple points of where the speed ramping is occurring. Then when I'm done, 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 I will turn it back on by pushing D on my keyboard to reactivate the clip. By adding this, you get extremely smooth transitions on top of extremely smooth transitions, which gives the entire video a really good flow. Now for the intro, there were some effects that I used that are not included in DaVinci Resolve, primarily my Shake Sauce plugin, which you can get linked down in the description. So just right out of the box, once you drag it on top of an adjustment clip, it has a default shake. You can turn up the glow flash, you can turn down the shake speed, and then also maybe if you want, you can turn up warp. It's kind of fun to use. Now this is filled with shakes and flashes and all kinds of stuff. And by the way, anything I showed you today really isn't gonna matter unless you know how to film the videos. So make sure to check out this video linked right here. And thanks for your support as always, guys. And I will see you all in my next video.